I'm attorney Justin Clark. Coming up just ahead on You Have Real Estate, when do you have to pay taxes on the sale of real estate? Also, Randall Construction is here to tell us how they're disrupting positively the construction industry in Central Florida. It's all just ahead. It's You Have Real Estate. And welcome to You Have Real Estate with me, attorney Justin Clark. Whether you're a first-time home buyer, seasoned investor, or looking to sell your home, this next 30 minutes is designed just for you. Think of like hitting multiple open houses all from your living room, but with my attorney advice throughout the way. If you have any questions whatsoever, I have people standing by right now, 407 205 0400. If you're looking to start that house hunt this weekend, if you're looking for the dream home, Dallas Lehman with You Have Mortgages standing by to get you pre-qualified because no one's going to go show you houses until you get that pre-qualification letter. Dallas is standing by right now, 407-205-0400. Awesome show for you today, but first it's time for my opening statement. Tonight's opening statement is brought to you by our good friends over at Margaritaville Cottages of Orlando. I get this question all the time, Justin. I'm thinking about selling my house, but I don't want to give all the profits to the IRS. Do you have to pay taxes when you sell a house? Well, the, the question's a little bit more complicated than you might think. We're going to answer that question also. We talk all the time here about a real housing crisis that we have. It's just too expensive. I mean, for the regular family right now to rent a home is virtually impossible. Well, we have a company here in Central Florida that their mission is to solve that problem will tell you all about that as well. But first, I was so scared this morning because it's getting hot again. And I was like, oh, here we go with the electricity bill. I forgot something. I forgot that IQ Power Solar has installed solar at my house. I don't care how hot it gets anymore because my electricity bill is going to be $30 or $40. Stephen Bader with IQ Power Solar tells us how. You know, the EPA puts out a graph that, that, that rates states and, and areas for productivity in regard to photovoltaics or solar panels and Florida ranks pretty high so solar is a lot more valuable here than in other states. One of the largest differentiators between us and our competitors is we really we constantly try to understand electricity and uh, in reality solar has a different value to every single home based on their behavior and the way that they live their life and if you don't really look at those things you can't really gauge a proper ROI. Our programs are all no money down programs they're not designed to you know, to get money down or to get any money up front. They're designed to essentially have you into a program where your payment is less than what you're already paying on your electric bill. It's supposed to be a very easy, seamless transition. Um, there's very rare cases where, you know, if someone, you know, doesn't necessarily qualify for the better programs or subprime lenders, et cetera, but it's no money down. You don't pay until after it's installed. You're already saving money before you pay anything. And now it's time for real questions. Every week here on You Have Real Estate, we ask real questions to the truly trend-setting people in Central Florida's real estate community. Today on the show, I have Paul Ketter and Jessica Allen with Randall Construction. And we also have Brian Fay from Attorneys Justin Clark. And so, sounds familiar, I know. From the law firm, who's a tax accountant. He's going to answer all of your IRS questions as well. Let me start with you guys. Paul, Jessica, welcome to the show. How are you today? Great. Thanks Doing for having great. us. So great, Randall, Randall Construction, right? You mm -hmm. recognize the problem, obviously, in this market. And the problem is, first of all, it's hard to hire anyone to work in the construction business right now because there's so much going on. So projects are taking forever. But I think you've also recognized that the rental market is completely and totally out of control. And to your credit, you recognize this, I think, before really anyone else did. What are you guys doing about those issues? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have a bunch of different projects, uh, different types of products that we're developing. And I think as far as most of the construction industry, uh, we do a lot of R&D. So well, our wall and building system does is ables to get builders uh, multifamily, mm -hmm. mostly six story, about 120 units, uh, quicker than market. Get getting projects done quicker. Usually we can save about three to, to four months. And then we have a pod system that is basically a complete bathroom or kitchen that we can save another 45 days. Mm -hmm. So it's that lead to market um, plus that need for the, the labor force. 
So the labor force, it takes that out of the field and we can control it better in the manufacturing facility. We're really looking to partner with those owners, developers, and GCs who are looking to cut down their time to build those affordable family housing units. When they bring us in on the project, what they're doing is they're really bringing in an expert who can get rid of the traditional stick build and again, as Paul mentioned, cut down on our time to build, which is going to allow families to move into that building at an affordable rate much faster than if you were using the traditional building process currently. Yeah, you're not the kind of person, you're not the business that someone would call and they want to get their bathroom remodeled. That, that's not you. In fact, right. that, that general contractor is actually your customer or your Correct. client. But right. you've really had to go in and talk to these contractors and change their thought process of how construction really works. How have you done that? Exactly, exactly. So uh, in Randall, we have 14 divisions of self-performing. We have about 1,300 employees. Um, and we try to incorporate the whole construction process in right. our in our company. So we can take care of about 80% of the building, which, you know, classically, um, GCs don't like to, to put all that responsibility on a subcontractor, but I, I think they're starting to see the ways and the benefit of having all that under one roof, really being a partner rather than just being a subcontractor yeah. on the project. Right. What we've tried to do is really diversify the business model so it's less risk for the builder, but what they're really getting out of that experience when they work with Randall is a one point of contact, a single source of responsibility, and someone who's been in the industry for over 30 years knows what we're doing and knows how to really expedite the whole building process for that GC. What we're doing is lowering general conditions and giving them a really kind of mitigated risk operation. And if you're a developer or general contractor and you're just used to doing things the same way we've been doing it since the Flintstone days, <laughs> right. I mean, give Randall a call. I'll hook you up with them directly. 407-205-0400. I was downtown this weekend, almost got run over by scooters and things, you know? And by the way, these scooters are not to get from point A to point B. They're, they like doing wheelies on them and things. I think it's a party down there, these scooters. But, My 11-year-old just wants to jump on one as soon as we get downtown yeah. every time. But we know that the you know a lot of the millennials do want to move downtown, but we've got rental rates downtown of $1,700, $1,500 at least a month for a regular old one-bedroom apartment. Now, my understanding is Orlando sort of the next place we're going to see a lot of micro apartments? What Absolutely. are these things? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll let Jessica start with with the micro apartments. She's uh, our our expert in yeah. that type of branding. So. so, have you ever gotten run over by scooters? I or, have okay. not. Do you know I mean, I have boys though? at home, so I've okay. been a, a couple times. I've been run over, but it's only at my house, never downtown. Sorry for your luck. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when we were talking about micro apartments, again, we're addressing the housing issue here. There's not enough space in the downtown area to put full size and get as many people in as we're looking to get in. So the next generation is really going to be micro apartments where we can have full amenity. You've got some neighbors, you've got some people you can go up and spend some time in your spa pool or as we like to call it spool at the top of the roof, um, a workspace, a type of environment where you can leave your home and go down in the same building and have a place where you can do your job and enjoy all that you have in the downtown area. So we really are looking into as we start to craft um, prefabricated modular systems at Randall, ways that we can put an entire bathroom and kitchen together on our site, um, put that together at a micro apartment level, and, and again, record timing, get an entire building built up to accommodate what's needed in downtown Orlando moving forward. And then how big are these typically, you said? Um, they're, well, so the micro apartments, they're basically a large hotel room yeah. with a kitchenette mm -hmm. and a bathroom, ranging between 400 and 600 square foot. So they're not huge, sure. but... You know, when I got out of college and, and went into the, the workforce and started being a professional, you know, a young professional, I didn't want to stay at home and cook and right. entertain. And, you know, so these micro apartments allow that space to entertain and, and work and also um, be able to come and go as, yeah. as you please, really. Enjoy not, the downtown Not really area maintain at home. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know a ton Hop of... on a scooter and go. Yeah, I mean, I know a ton of people who lived in studio apartments. Even in downtown Orlando now, it's, I mean, it's kind of a similar concept, but more right. of an apartment than a studio, I think. It's yeah. just a, around the same size. I mean, I think it's a great idea, but the real shocking part is how quickly you guys are able to, to put those up. And I was watching a TV show the other day. It was Look, I'm a loser. I have, no, you know, I have two little kids. I watch no. the dumbest stuff. I was watching a show about building a cruise ship okay i don't know why but i was watching it just don't judge me but they when they build this cruise ship they literally will like put in the the rooms they're already built exactly. and they, they put them right in there on all the different levels yeah, is, is that a similar play. concept 
basically a similar concept. So a lot of time is spent up front with the site development. And while that site development is happening, I mean, that's probably, uh, you know, 50% of the construction build time is the site development. Right. So while that's happening, we can be building or prefabricating walls, bathrooms, exactly. kitchens. So when it's time, we just stack them up. It's basically kind of like the Lego system. Yeah. You stack yeah. them up, you hook them all together, and uh, it really speed to market is just incredible. And we're not limited by where the current building is at and what phase that mm -hmm. is. We've already begun production in the background, and we just ship it to site and load it up. We Lucky had, you know, back in 2008, 9, 10, I, we do a lot of bankruptcy at my law firm. We mm -hmm. had a lot of construction people in my right. office filing bankruptcy. There wasn't a lot of work going around then. What's the labor market like now in construction? So labor market now is, uh, there's a huge shortage in, in skilled labor. Um, another Nationwide. Thi yeah, another uh, aspect is uh, in estimating not so much as project management, but there's still a need in project management, mm -hmm. but in estimating. People uh, don't even realize that a lot of these budgets and everything, you have to have estimators to, to get into and, and establish a budget before we can Absolutely. even build something. So that's a, a big shortage. Um, there's a couple schools locally that, that have been answering that shortage. So uh, it's really exciting to be in the construction industry at this time, especially being through the, the 2008, 2009 downfall it's 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 very rewarding right now to be in the construction industry yeah, and one of the things that we have recognized is using our prefabrication using precast systems we're able to avoid any negative impact from a labor shortage mm -hmm. because what we're doing is taking a traditional building site we're moving scaffolding we don't need as many laborers we need a crane a couple of guys and we can install our product fairly quickly again we're lowering risks you don't have a ton of unskilled laborers who maybe didn't get the appropriate training um, so we're we're eliminating a lot of our risk there. And another thing that Randall is doing is we're becoming a community partner with Orlando, um, excuse me, the Orange County Public School System, and we're going to be an alternative site for high schoolers coming up because we're really invested in the next generation of construction workers and people who, it's really not just swinging a hammer and a nail anymore. There's a lot of technology jobs that are out there, estimating jobs that mm -hmm. we need the next generation to be fully prepared for, so. Are we hiring now? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> every day, every so, day. I, I mean, can. look, absolutely. if you're looking for a job in the construction industry, I can't think of a better place to start or continue your career. Randall Construction, 407-205-040. What, what's that? Can he ask if you drug test? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. I could kind of hear him absolutely. telepathically absolutely. asking me. <laughs> Paul Ketter, Jessica Allen, Randall Construction. Yeah. Excellent job today. Thank now, you. Now, Paul, you're going to stick around for the real estate roundtable, I Absolutely. hope, right? Absolutely. So, Jessica, I'm going to say bye to you. Thank Excellent you for having job. Me. You guys have to come back. This was great. Absolutely. Anytime. Oh, yeah. You got yeah, it. So, Thanks so for having us. You got it. So, we're going to bring in Brian Fay now. Brian's a tax accountant at the attorneys, Justin Clark and Associate. He's uh, excellent at what he does. Now, Paul, I want to be very clear with you, buddy. Nope. I did not bring the tax guy on because I think you have tax issues. All right, so don't <laughs> don't read into this at all, please. Yeah, okay. we were we were talking back and talking about taxes and and uh, equity and and stuff like that. So uh, very knowledgeable. Yeah, very knowledgeable. No, no doubt about it. And Brian, welcome to the show, buddy. First time here, I think, right? Yes, it is. Thank so you. We have a lot of real estate agents that watch this program, as as you probably know. Real estate is a ten ninety nine business. Mm -hmm. Any advice for my realtor friends? how they should handle their taxes throughout the year? Um, well, a lot of uh, realtors and all 1099 uh, employees or, or contractors usually run into problems come tax time, and it's usually because they don't uh, hold or pay estimated tax payments throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, then it's time to, you know, to, to settle up with the IRS and then, you know, then they're in some trouble. I mean, what should I do? Should I like, check in with the IRS quarterly or should every time I get a, a closing check, should I take money out? Any advice on how I don't get myself in trouble? Yeah. Um, you know, you know how much money you make throughout the year when you get a closing check. You, you should know, you know, depending on your tax bracket, 15, 25 percent of that should be, you know, stored away, saved away for the IRS. Hey, let's get to filing tax returns now, because if you ever listen to my radio show, you know that I feel about the uh, pop-up tax preparer. You know, it's it's the place that pops up in the strip mall, and then they mess something up in April when you file. You go back in October, and they're selling Halloween costumes at that point. You know, or you go at Christmas time, and they're selling Christmas treats because they're only there for a couple months. I mean, Brian, this is a little bit dangerous when you're doing 
one of the most important financial aspects of your year to trust a pop-up store and a strip mall. Yeah, absolutely. And you think about all the information that you give to these people. You know, they have your social security number, you have their your bank account information, where, you know, what daycare your your children go to. Um, you know, you give all this information to, you know, just some random person, you know, you have to be really careful about, you know, who you're giving your information to. And and there's no uh, coincidence that there's a correlation between the increase in um, identity theft related to IRS and tax related um issues and um you know the increase in those type of pop-up uh, tax preparation yeah, exactly places. if you have any issues with the irs please don't bury your head in the sand because they can actually kind of lull you to sleep they might not find you for a year two years even three years but at some point they will find you and here's what happens you don't pay american express they have to sue you come knock on your door get a judgment the IRS, they just have to send you a letter and then they take money out of your account and then they take money out of your paycheck. So it's time to get ahead of your IRS problems. Please call Brian Fay, 407-205-0400. Brian, you don't just deal with problems. I mean, you handle returns and things as well like any other accountant, right? Yeah, of course. Um, but you, you know, but we work together at a law firm, so I imagine that your prices must be way more expensive than the pop-up store that's going to be a Halloween costume later, right? No, actually, actually not. Um, you know, we have similar uh, prices to where you would go to. You know, if uh, you know that any type of uh, big uh, tax preparation, you know. Uh, company you would go to. I've always thought that tax day for W-2 employees is like February 1st, right? Because they've had money taken out all year. And they, they, want, they want to file right away. Tax day for self-employed people is uh, October 15th, October ba basically. 15th, exactly. what, tell me about this automatic, automatic extension and do I get punished for using it? Um, well, an extension, it's an extension to file your tax return. It's not an extension to pay. So even if you don't file your tax return until October 15th, which would be the last day to file, uh, if you file for an extension, um, you, you're still going to be penalized uh, if you don't pay come April 15th. Um, no. Gotcha. All right. Now, let's go to, uh, this is a real estate show, obviously. So a lot of people watching are thinking about selling their home. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they have to go through in their head is, well, do I have to pay taxes on the profit from the sale of my home? What's the answer? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Get out of here now. Thank you. <laughs> what what uh, does it depend on? Um, so uh, if it's your primary home, uh, typically you're allowed a, an exception to how much um, uh, you have to pay taxes on a, a particular gain. 250000 or $500,000, depending on whether you're married or single, uh, is typically excluded uh, that you wouldn't have to pay taxes on. Uh, but that also um, not, isn't always the case. It depends on how long you lived in the home, if uh, you know it was inherited or you purchased it, when you purchased it. Uh, depends on several different factors. Yeah. I mean, what do you think, Paul? How, how do you see the real estate market? Do you, let, let's say I'm thinking about selling my house now, and now Brian Faze told me that I don't have to worry about taxes because it's my primary home. You think now is a good time to sell, or do you see it going up, down, steady? What do you think? I think um, right now is the best time for, for sellers. Sellers, buyers, you know, it's, it's a seller's market, and there's not that much inventory out there. So right now, sellers, uh, I don't foresee it going anywhere. I mean, the, the how did, housing shortage is uh, going to be a need. What do we have, 1,500 people moving to Central Florida every week, I think, uh, is the number. But yeah. Yeah, 900 so people a day. Oh, 900, Over 900 oh. people a day. Every year, it's a city the size of Orlando is created. I mean, it's you know, yeah, it's a, it's a hot sense. place to be. We have no state income taxes, so I mean, I'm I'm pretty aggressive on Florida and investing in Florida. And I think the real estate market here probably is not going to continue to go up significantly, but I think it stays about the same. But I also think that look, if you're looking to buy a house now, even if you you don't think that the market's going to go up significantly with the interest rates where they are. You can uh, virtually every time now pay less for your mortgage than you would for rent. So I, that's why I think it's a good time to buy. But Brian, that leads me to the next question. It's the whole dichotomy of the self-employed person, right? They go talk to Dallas Lehman at You Have Mortgage and say, well, I made 200 grand last year. They're self-employed. And, and maybe they did. And then he says, let me see your tax return. And it says they made negative 20 grand, right? So. <laughs> How do you how do you balance these two things? The self-employed person doesn't want to pay a lot of taxes, but then they they want to go be able to buy a house and qualify for a mortgage. How do you help people balance those two? 
Um, well, I think the biggest part of it is uh, just uh, record keeping and, and uh, how good uh, you keep uh, your books throughout the year. Um, you know, you want to keep um, written proof of everything, obviously, but, you know, obviously that's time consuming. A lot of people don't do that. But, um, you know, when it's come t time to prepare your taxes, especially when, you know, you're looking to get a mortgage, it's important to uh, really, um, you know, look at your bank account and make sure that everything aligns with that. If you need to prepare your taxes this year, if you want to do it now, please call Brian Fay, 407-205-0400. I assure you, you file your taxes with him. If there's any issue in October, he will not be selling Jason mask <laughs> in October. It will still be a law firm. It will still be an accounting firm. Isn't that right? No Jason mask. No Jason mask. Thank goodness for that. Now, Brian, you're going to stick around for the Real Estate Roundtable, I hope. Right? Absolutely. And now, without further ado, it is your part of the program. It's time for the Real Estate Roundtable. Every week here on You Have Real Estate, we answer your questions from throughout the week. All you have to do is go to our Facebook, You Have Real Estate, and you can ask me questions directly right there. And we just might answer your question next week here on You Have Real Estate. All right, let's go up to DeLand. It's Milo in DeLand. I'm thinking about buying a modular home. How do you think modular affects the value? Paul, what do you think? So there's a different classification of modular rather than what it used to. I think the building industry is becoming modular, uh, more prefab, which we call modular. Um, but it does affect the the value of the home. If, if it's a classic modular with, um, you know, the the panel walls and, and not traditional construction, there is there is some, some value. But as far as a modular building, uh, a modular building structure is as sound as a traditional construction building structure yeah. so and in some places in some aspects maybe a little bit more uh built built up a little bit for the the storms and and uh code changes and all that kind of stuff let's try to figure this out together so i think we all know what a, a mobile home is right yes. i mean we see the mobile home parks and and that sort of thing then we kind of have in our head what a modular home is as well which i think at least me i think of it as a mobile home that seems like more of a pain to move but i think we've gotten a little bit more aggressive and and made the modular home much closer to a regular home is that that's absolutely. that's what i'm hearing right absolutely absolutely with with the uh well i don't want to say high-end finishes but with the higher end finishes the drywall rather than paneling it, it's it's a standard home it's just put together in sections so and um there's a bunch of companies that do it now and and i think they're doing a great job yeah. great job and it's it's a lot quicker than a traditional so the block and so brick. current day modular home how many pieces so to speak would that normally come in typically you see well you're usually limited on the size right so you only get 12 foot by like 56 foot so usually it comes in about three pieces um and and then it just kind of goes right together and and you finish it out with with a roof you know yeah. the roof can't be on before you put it on but uh yeah it just comes in about three pieces and you put it together it kind of clips in together and you have hurricane straps and all all different types of hardware so let's say i'm building a 2500 square foot house from scratch how long does that take generally uh traditional construction yeah. you're looking probably six months and modular home modular home you're probably looking 90 days no kidding yeah so at least half the time yes. wow yeah pretty crazy uh we're trying uh i I see a show that's like 90 day builds. Yeah. Um, I've built a 30 day model before. Um, so I, I think a very good build time and what it should be standard is, you know, 45, 60 days. Got it. All right. Jason in Orlando. Jason, thank you for the questions. He, he says he watches on Facebook. Love the show. I'm selling my primary home and I should make $90,000. Do I have to pay capital gains? Brian Fay, what do you think? Um, typically you, uh, would not have to, uh, because of the exclusion. Um, 
it, whether he was single or married, it would fall if he has ninety thousand dollars in gains, then um, it should be excluded from your income. But it depends on a couple other factors as far as how long he's lived in the home for and uh, a couple other things. What about a second home? I have a beach house. I want to get rid of it. Am I protected in that as well, or do I have to pay taxes on those gains? Um, that's a, an investment property like that. You would pay taxes on that. Uh, you you would pay typically capital gains tax. Unless um, you know you own the property for less than a year, then uh, it would be short-term capital gains, which are e- normally equal to your ordinary tax bracket. Gotcha, Samantha, up in Marion County, I have property in the woods, and I want to build a new home, but it takes too long. Any other ideas, Paul? Uh, modular, yeah. Uh, pre-manufactured homes. Um, there's some metal building systems out there that you can that you can buy just kits that come up, and uh, there's a bunch of very qualified professionals that that can build those for you. Um, in, in the custom home market, they're they're getting more prefabs as well. Yeah. So if you think it's going to take too long, just do some research, look online. There's there's some house kits out there that that'll take a whole lot less time, probably half the time as as traditional. And it looks like a traditional build anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, they they make them look great. There's no doubt yeah. about it. All right, Kenny in Oviedo says, "How safe is Credit Karma to do my taxes?" What do you think? I didn't even know. I did know this, actually, just recently. Credit Karma, you're mm-hmm. supposed to go there, and it tells you what your credit score is now. Mm-hmm. Well, you can buy boats and do tax, all sorts of things on this Credit Karma now. They're doing taxes. What do you think? Um, I didn't even know they were doing taxes. Yeah, they, <laughs> they are. I mean, I feel like maybe they should keep to credit scores, but hey. Yeah, that's that's what I was, I was literally thinking uh, just now. I mean, uh, that's, you know... It, if uh, if I was doing my taxes, I would go to somewhere that you know specializes in taxes. Alex and Kissimmee ask, I'm looking for a job in construction. How choosy can I be right now? You can be very choosy, very choosy. I mean, there's a, a limited amount of uh, skilled labor out there. Like I said, estimating before um, is a very good uh, profession to go into. Um, but companies are hiring. Everyone's hiring. The construction industry is is going going crazy right now paul ketter randall construction excellent job today thank you please tell jessica i said hello and she did great as well will do brian fay is here to do any tax return or handle your tax issues also thank you buddy thank you to see you but most importantly thank you for joining me here today if you're looking to sell your house or if you have any questions about anything we talked about today or you need to get pre-approved for that house hunt you know the phone number 407-205-0400. Thanks for joining me. I'm attorney Justin Clark, and I'll see you here next week for another edition of You Have Real Estate. You Have Real Estate with attorney Justin Clark is sponsored by Margaritaville Cottages, Orlando. Thank you so much for joining me today here on You Have Real Estate. Don't forget to check us out Monday through Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. over on Florida Man Radio 105.5 or download the Florida Man Radio app. I love seeing you on TV. I look forward to seeing you on the radio.